Now, for speaking of this um, prize closet of ours, uh, how many months now have we heard that you and Mikey D and his wife and his child want to go to Poison? Oh, Mikey D's been bringing this up since April when Brett Michaels was on our show. What is it now? It is now mid-August. Mid-August. And when is the show? Is it this week? Is it Friday? It's tonight. It's tonight. I get an email last night from Mikey, and we've told uh, Earl, get the tickets, take care of this, uh, four tickets, make sure it's done, blah, blah, blah. I get an email last night from Mikey's wife, that Earl has let her know that these tickets that he's promised since uh, April have now not come through, Earl? Is that the story? I got an email late last night. Well, yeah. not late last night. About a quarter to seven last night from their PR people that they had to cut back on the, uh, for guest list tickets for the show. And they wanted to cut it down. They had to cut our number of tickets down from four to two. And How they, can they do that when we have listeners? Well, they explained that they were doing this across the board. This came from It doesn't management. matter. You can't take something away from people once you've given it to them. And I, and I spent three hours on the phone trying to get a hold of people, uh -huh. trying, to, trying to basically explain that. It was like, hey, we, had, we got four people ready to go, and now you're telling me that there's only two tickets. And then it was my understanding that, you know, Fez did not want to go. And I was like, hey, can we at least get the three tickets? Perfect. So we can get the three tickets. That sounds good. And and that's what I've been fighting for. I'm still fighting for that. And and I called Mikey. I didn't want to call him before I got everything or at least tried to work everything out. And I explained right. to him what the situation was. He was very cool about it. And then about an hour later, you know, I, I get that email from well, Mikey's wife. And I'm like, where is this coming from? I mean, where, like, th it was crazy talk. And I went, I explained to her. I, explained I don't see it as crazy talk, Earl. They thought they were going to something. And then the night before, you or the record company are saying, no, what we promised you can't work out. That's not the way the deal works. No, and I understand that. And, but, and I explained to them that I'm still fighting for this. I, you know, I'm as a, my first, the first thing I said to Mikey when I called him about it was, he was like, hey, how are you doing? I'm like, I'm not happy right now. I, I, I was very ups I was upset because suddenly this thing went from, you know, everything was fine, everything is cool, to everything is not cool. And I spent most of the evening trying to straighten this thing out, and I'm still trying to straighten it out. I explained to them that I'm going to work the situation out, and if worst case scenario, I'll pay out of pocket for tickets and make sure this thing happens. Well, she wrote to me that they're ready to pay out of pocket. Because I guess the baby's all upset that she's not going or something. I don't know. But why wouldn't you let Fez and I know any of this stuff was going down? Well, again, I didn't find out until almost a quarter to seven. And then the second I got that email, I was on the phone. I'm emailing but are, people. Are we now uh, to understand the poison is so big after all this time? They're back in a big, big way? I'm, I'm as confused as anybody. Like, how did this happen? Because it went from, I mean, I got an email as early as May that said, four tickets, no problem. And I went, great. And then last week, last Friday, four tickets, no problem. I called uh, yesterday just to get a written confirmation again, and I didn't get anything. And then, like, at 645, you know, Eastern time, I get this email that they were cutting back everyone. Every, I've never guess. fucking heard about this in my life. I've been in radio my whole adult life. A record company promises you, you tickets. You give them out to listeners. That has to be... You know, it has to be honored. It has to be honored. I've never heard of it not honored. Yeah, and it, and again, and it's something that I'm not, Hello? I'm not, I'm not at fault or arguing about. I'm still fighting. It's like, hey, we made this commitment. We we'll at least honor that commitment, or at least most of that commitment, because again, Fez did not want to go. So Mikey and Helen don't. Now Fez can't go. I don't want to go. That's fine with me. That's the good news in this. I will put my foot down until you're going, Fez. <laughs> Please do not. So, Mike, Mike, was Mikey cool when you talked to him? He was very cool when I, I haven't him. even talked to Mikey. I got a really upset email from Helen late last night. I wrote back to her, I'll be on this first thing in the morning, because I hadn't even heard about it. I, and again, I spent most of the last yesterday evening trying to work this thing out, because I didn't want to call them and say, this is definitely not happening, and then I get a call back and let it me was happening. You, let me ask you something, Earl. And why doesn't this happen with anyone else but Mikey? 
why am I constantly in a situation with Mikey D and his family that there's some kind of confusion? I understand it happened with anybody else. Honestly, I really don't know. I mean, this is just... Because they're starting to feel like it's on purpose. That's what I don't understand, how Mikey's cool with Earl saying, I'm going to try to work this out, I'm going to fix it, and then you get a really upset email from Helen. At the same time, it's because I didn't know. If I would have heard, too, I would have been able to tell Helen, don't worry about a thing, blah, blah, blah. But I, I had no idea any of it was going down. Nobody let me know. Again, and again, I spent most of the evening trying to work the situation out. And by the time Mikey got that call, I had exhausted every possibility. But it's now taken care of. I understand that. I mean, but but you got him a pair of tickets, right? Yes. But there's three of them. But there's three of them. I know there's three of them, but at least you came up with a pair of tickets for them. Yeah, but what are you going to say? All right, the whole family's going somewhere. Oh, but not so fast, you. You get back in bed. You can't do that, Fez, as a parent. Well, I understand that. You know, go out of pocket and get one more ticket. And Why where did she sit? On the other side of the fucking uh, stadium? Well, first of all, I don't understand this thing of, uh, you know, the baby's upset that she can't go to poison. What little girl wants to go to poison anyway, that that's her lifelong dream? Every family is a little different with what their musical tastes are. So that th this whole play in the card again, that the baby's upset, that the little nine-year-old girl's upset? Yeah. See, I don't, I don't go along with that whatsoever. There's no kid upset that they're not going to poison. This kid is. You heard she called yesterday. She was threatening. Oh, yeah, threatening. That was such a rehearsed phone call. That I swear, that so reminded me of the Mikey D that got me so pissed at him over a year ago. Where it's like, I'm going to have the daughter call in and act upset and try to put a guilt trip on Fez. And now it's happening with Earl, too. All right, I see this whole thing happen. She wants to go to Poison as much as she wants to be a radio host. That's her dream. All right, now you've taken it into two different places. That's the, or now, I bet we're up to three. The point is this. We promised our friends tickets. We promised them three tickets. And we're only providing two. Yeah, we promised them four tickets. I mean, if you, I say I went as far as four. Well, Fez doesn't want to go. But, yeah, I understand. So you're down to three there automatically. So, uh, and then my my last request to the to the poison camp was basically, hey, look, I understand that you have to cut the list down, but can you at least make it three because it's a package deal with them. It's three people. It's right, a it's a family uh, it's day a family, out. It's a family. And of Fez, three. when the family's going out, you can't say, okay, part of the family's not going. Believe me, my parents used to do that, and to this day, I'm still a little bitter. I understand what was promised. Yeah. I, you know, I totally understand that, and that should be honored by the record company, by Poison, whoever. The and promoter. us. And us. Yeah. But this was a favor Earl was doing. Mikey didn't win any sort of contest or anything. Earl was trying to do Mikey a favor, and he could only get two tickets, it turns out. Now he's pissed. No, I'm now he's pissed at Earl, who tried to do him a favor. All right, I see that point of it. I don't know if anybody should be pissed, but at the same time, we should be working to settle this. Thing. I mean, that's what I'm more upset at the fact that there that somehow it's my fault. I'm like, I did everything by the book. I made the request early. I made it often. I got a written confirmation. I called the I called them more than more than one time to get that confirmation. And then they pulled the rug out on me, and then somehow it's my fault. I, d I just don't like the fact that Earl calls them to explain the situation, which is bad. I understand that. Mikey's cool with him on the phone. Then immediately Helen starts firing off upset emails at Ronnie. So cool to Earl's face, then tries to, you know, instead of working with him and trying to get this thing settled, goes to Ronnie. I got to tell the truth. I'm glad I heard about it, though. I'm glad I got the uh, uh, the heads up because I wasn't going to get it from Earl. And the thing that really upset me about the Helen email was that she has called me at home and on my cell asking, you know, where's the status of these tickets? She could have easily picked up the phone and asked me what was going on. But Probably instead, at that point she thought she was getting fucked over and uh, she took it upstairs. But even so, I, I explained it to her husband what was going on. He should have at least explained to her what was happening. And even if she was still upset, she had every right to pick up the phone and call me. Or you could have called her. 
But again, when I called Mikey, he was very cool. He goes, I don't know, I'll explain everything. Everything's cool. I'm like, I was like, it sucks, and I was upset about it. And I said, I'm working very hard to, to make the situation better. And he was like, I've never heard of this in my whole career. I've never heard of a record company promising something and then taking it back. Why does Earl have to be a slave, though, to these people for once? You know, Earl promises them tickets. He got, it. he gave them tickets. How about them being? Actually responsible adults for one, and either the mother or the father says, you know what, I'll stay home and I'll take my kid. Because it was a family night out. How can you stay home and take your kid? Dude, you're you going to have a million chances to see Poison. Earl got him the tickets. That, that's a great job. Two tickets. Enough said. Stay home, Mikey. Let, let the girls have a girls' night out. Mikey loves Poison. Let Helen go see him when they're playing Great Adventure. You could in go. Two weeks. Mikey and Lene could go, and it would still be girls' night out. Uh, you know what? That's the fucking uncle. The guy works like a slave. Who? You know, Earl. Do me a favor. Don't use the word slave anymore. Uh, it's I, a bad fucking connotation. But he he works like a dog to get these tickets. That's better. And and you know, by the way, and he didn't get the tickets. While you're acting like Earl should get a gold medal, he didn't get them. Shit happens. That's a phrase that people should, that the D family should get to understand more. You know, and, and Earl's tried to get a lot of us tickets. Sometimes he, he follow, he, he's able to come through. Sometimes he's not. We don't get pissed off. That's you don't true. see me going, oh, Earl, you didn't get me my Radiohead tickets uh, three weeks ago. Yeah, that I'm is never true. speaking to you again for the rest of my life. And Earl has worked on this since April. And there's no thank you whatsoever for even trying. I'm sure if he would have gotten the tickets, there would have been a thank you. But this. He didn't get them after saying he did. Now, here's what you guys don't understand. The show was tonight. They can't... Uh, what kind of tickets are they going to go now and right. get on their own? Come on. They, he, they have two free tickets, so you go up. Why don't we, you know, Earl... We, Go up to the show and get a third ticket yourself. You think you can't buy a bootleg ticket at a Poison show for for twelve bucks? You could, make things happen. Earl made them happen for you. Make things happen. You could probably still buy front row tonight. Where does that come from? See, now that's a shot of poison. It's true. I don't understand where Poison fucking gets off with this. And I know it's not the band Poison, it's the record company. Yeah, it was, it was, I got this from... Earl, are you taking this laying down, or do you make that fucking uh, threat that you can't back up, that we're pulling every fucking poison thing, anything from the record company, off of XM? I should be getting a call later from Elo going, who is Earl to use our names making threats? That's what you do when you're a producer, Earl. And again, I I spent the rest of that yesterday evening trying to make this better. Trying, trying to, doesn't help. Trying you, to straighten this to thing do. out. Nobody sits around and worry. If it was easy, right? If you would have got them in two seconds, we would have gave you just as much credit as if it took five months. I had the feeling that if Earl came through with front row tickets, backstage passes, limo ride, everything else, there would be something else to complain about. But there's no respect. You know, and I understand why they never respect anyone except for perhaps Ron Fest. They their emails to you are, are beautiful. Yes, I, they're and our friends. How about giving some respect to Earl who's trying to do things for you at least? That's exactly it. They're friends. So why is Earl expected to be their personal ticket broker and their employee? Earl does not work for Mikey and Helen. I right, wait. If this would have came up five months ago, that would have been a valid thing. Hey, I don't work for you. I can't get these tickets. But then we heard, no problem. There's going to be plenty of tickets. It's just poison. Blah, blah, blah. I was sitting here for all this stuff. Yes, I, I remember. We had, we had bread on the air. We go into a break. He calls us back and says, "Hey, look, thanks for having us. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it." And he invited Fez to the show. I mean, let's make that clear. He invited Fez to the show, or it basically invited all of us from the show to. to I know attend. he wanted to meet us or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, man, but I, you know, that because was... him and Fez are diabetes uh, girlfriends. <laughs> yes. We check our blood sugar together. You know what? And I, you know what? And I thought that was pretty cool. You know, you obviously didn't want to go. Dave didn't want to no. go. I couldn't go. You know, well, I'm going to tell you right now, if they were playing out in front of my house, I wouldn't look out the fucking window. But that's me. I'm different. Matter of fact, I'd be calling the police with a fucking noise complaint. You know, and they invited us. And again, I made it happen. And then when Mikey Mikey asked if we if he, we could use the tickets, I was like, sure. I mean, pe people here asking for tickets all the time. All right, that's what started this nightmare. 
Yes. The poison interview? What I tell you, Fez, before we even did it? Don't. Uh, yes. <laughs> I was on the big fucking no for that. From the word go. But the also thing is... Then I'm, when you were talking to him, I was staring at the ceiling. I said, trust me, I'm going to run with the diabetes angle. Actually, uh, when you were interviewing him, I was actually leaning back in, on my chair fantasizing about a Cinderella show. That's how <laughs> bored I was. I was wondering what kicks are up to. Cinderella's you know, I, found, I just found out. Uh oh, are they? <laughs> Fuck any other band. I should have picked out any other band. I found out. About, I didn't know this ticket thing was going on till today when we started talking about it. But I was ticked off yesterday with that phone call from Lene. She's just a little girl. That very rude phone call that she was put up to making. I mean, that was ungrateful. Right, Earl, do you have that thing? Play. Yes, we do. Play that from yesterday. All right, Fez, we were talking uh, back to school. Look who it is on the phone. It's little Lene. Hey, Lene. Hey, Ron. Hey, Fez. What can we do for you, honey? Nothing. I just wanted to say, well, number one, thanks for the poison tickets. Mm. And, um, Fezzy, I understand and stuff like that. Okay, so you don't have to go. It's okay. Oh, wow. her little feelings. Are, are your little feelings hurt, Lene? No. Do you wish Fez was there? No. You just, you just well, like free I, tickets. It, it would be nice if he would come, yeah. but, I mean, I understand. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like your dad's up to his old tricks. <laughs> What's that, Fuzz? Uh, of using his daughter to try to guilt me into something. No. Sounds like the old Mikey D rearing his uh, afro head again. No. It's nothing like that. I don't want to make you go in to the poison costume. Oh. All right, Lene. Nice talking to you, honey. I'm not done. I am not done. Hello? What do you want, honey? I'm not done. Tell okay. us all the things that you want to say. Okay. Okay, give me. Um, well, it better be front and back, okay? Otherwise, I'm going to be very angry at you. Not what it says. Not, I'm not talking to you, what it says. I'm talking to all. So real. And, um... I um, want to talk about, like, like I know everybody, like, hates going back to school, but I like going back to school. All right, Lene. All right. Thank you. Are you done? Yes, I'm done. All right, bye-bye. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. I thought it was adorable, Fez. It was in the sweet call. I thought it was rude and totally put up to. And here's Earl, who, at this point, everyone thinks the family's going. Yeah. And that's the way he's being talked to then. Earl, it better be front and back, Earl, or I'll be or I'll be mad. The only thing problem I have with that phone call is I seemed a little lazy. I got to start <laughs> and get myself back. This is why I won't even listen to a best stuff. I hate myself so bad it's just unbelievable. And it's typical D family. Ask for a little bit and then ask for a little bit more, or however the phrase. Take a little, give a little. She asked. Take for a little, th give a little. Some kind of phrase that basically says she asked for the section and then all of a sudden it's got to be front row. Can they just be classy with the high road for once? She's a little girl. She's yeah. a young girl. And, and, you know, maybe this is very exciting for her. She's going to meet uh, Ricky Rocket and Brett and uh, Cece Deville. Yeah, and Charlie Rocket is going to be there. It's going to be an exciting night. For Bobby Doll. And how come they always have to dime out? They smile right in Earl's face, and then they dime out to uh, to Ron. I just find That's the whole the... thing really rude on their part. I just find it extremely rude. Well, let's just get it fixed, Earl. Yeah, and I'm trying to. Unfortunately, Are you? I just see you sitting there watching this show. Well, unfortunately, it's uh, it's what nine something in L.A. time. Nothing's the the places aren't even open yet. I mean, nothing starts until ten o'clock east uh, Western time. So once one o'clock rolls around, I'm back on the phone. I'm trying to make something happen here. It's not like I'm deliberately going out to screw them or maliciously hurt them the day of a show. That's that's cruel. I mean, what I'm more upset about is that. I've done everything possible. I've gone above and beyond what I'm supposed to do with this. No, you're not. Four tickets. No, but working on it for what? Four months? I've been, you know, just I, I've sent email after email. I've made phone calls. I've been, and I even prefaced my emails. And I was like, sorry to be a pain in the ass, but blah blah blah. And, uh, and I got I'm, this sent to me from Miss Manners, Fez. I'm friends with Miss Manners, the actual person. 
It says, uh, anyone to be complaining about whether or not a favor has been performed properly, appalling. Now, I disagree with that. I say, if you say you're going to have four tickets, you got to have four tickets, or else the guy would have went somewhere else for him. I agree with Miss Manners. I find it completely appalling. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Isn't that one of the old phrases of all time? Yeah, that one you're right about. Okay. What does it mean, though? It means you've been given something, take it with gratitude. Don't just look at it in the mouth. No, I mean, don't don't take things for granted. Here's what it meant, you idiot. If someone's giving you a horse, don't start checking its teeth to see what kind of health it's in. Just take the horse nicely. Well, I don't see how that applies to this. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't at all. Here's the fucking problem. Four tickets. They'll take three. Earl's <laughs> providing two. That's the problem. It's created a, a problem more than anything else. Uh, Mark, you're on Fez. Yeah, I agree with Fez and Dave. Fuck Mikey D, that fucking scumbag. He got free shit and he's fucking complaining. He's a fucking albino, Greek, blonde, Afro-having queer who should go right. home and fucking jerk off to Brett Michaels. Fuck him. All right, I'm not going to sit around listening to that kind of I stuff. second that, Mark. That's crazy talk. You know, and, and always putting Lene up to the thing. He always puts Lene. It's always Lene who's doing things. Lene wants to go see Poison. I do not. That little girl doesn't. It, you're absolutely right. No little girl wants to. No girl wants to go see Poison. It's little girls, they like Hello Kitty. They want to go see, you know, boy bands or whatever. They don't want to go see hair bands from the 80s. Some do. It's never Mikey D, though, is it? It's never Mikey D takes a puppet. It's a little girl. Hector, you're on a fez. Hey, fellas. How about a new policy, man? If the tickets ain't for Ron or Fez, everyone gets their own damn tickets. Yeah. Cause a lot of problems. Well, you know, my chick wanted to go to some show, and I checked with Earl about it, and he couldn't pull it off. I mean, it happens sometimes. And threats happen. Did to you me. send yourself off a furious email? No, I didn't. Earl's over three for me, but I'm not going to hold it against him. I still love it, and I know that he he works hard and diligently to get the ticket. This is the first time I've seen you and Earl on the same side of anything. Look, when it comes to Mikey D, Earl and I will always be united against that villain. But but besides that, Earl's in the right here. He he did a favor for the guy. He got him tickets. Hey, Scott, you're on Ryan Fez. Hey, how you doing? Hey, hey Earl, I'm, so I'm calling for Earl. This is uh, Scott from Behind the Barricade. How you doing? How you doing, bro? Doing all right, man. You know what? Let me tell you something. I photographed Poison twice this year, and because um, I'm a concert photographer, in case you, uh, Ron and Fez didn't know. Anyways, I had to fight tooth and nail with Poison's publicist. She can be quite the bitch. But you know what, though? After I hemmed and hawed with her and we basically argued, hashed it out, I did get my photo passes. And, in fact, I am going to photo- I'm photographing them again on the 25th down in Birmingham, Alabama. But, Earl, I just sent you over an email of all the contacts that I have in the Poison Camp. I don't know if it will help you out or if not. Hopefully it does. But uh, good luck, though. All right. Thank you very much, bud. No problem, bud. Bye. So, okay. I'm some Alabama tickets. I just so Poison knows they got this fucking reputation now. For me, you can't go promising people tickets and then pull it back. I've never had it happen. I mean, what if this was for ninth call winners? What do you do? I know you think you won, but you didn't. No. You know who'd be legally responsible? Us. You can't tell people you got something and you don't. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, if that was the legal agreement here, and yes, I believe that Poison should totally honor their commitment to this. That pisses me off, too, that they try to pull that crap. But, you know, Mikey D, Earl, I hope you learn this lesson. The next time Mikey asks for something, please, God in heaven, say right up front, you can't do it. You can't pull it off. You don't know who to call that it can't be done. Matter of fact, anytime I ask you for something, say the same thing. If I ask you for water, I want you to make that statement that Fez made up for you. Because that's, instead of uh, acting like, yes, we're going to have quality here, let's fucking play it down like you can't do a damn thing, Earl. No, and again, when people, I mean, people on the staff ask me for things all the time, and I always try very hard to make it happen, I... I always, always, always make the best effort. And if I can't. I know you got those tickets for Thing 3 the other night. Yes. Perfect example. And I explained to her how it could happen, how one way it could go go one way, it can go the other way. And she was cool with it. This is the first time I've ever had my balls busted about a ticket request. Chris, you're on my Fez. Hey, I just want to welcome back Crybaby Fez. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not crying. I don't have to go, and I don't want to go. 
Come I would on. be cr- I would be Where's crying if I was in Jones Beach tonight watching Where's that the concert. Cowbell? I got a fever, and the only prescription is cowbell. I don't even understand. Typical Mikey D entrapment, Earl. And don't fall for it anymore. Hey, uh, David, you're on Run of Fez. Uh, yes, Dave. Hey, listen. I think Mikey D's a piece of shit. You know, he doesn't care. I mean, he's bitching them on about these uh, poison tickets, but it's perfectly all right for you two, Ron and Fez, to uh, make fun of his his daughter mouth fucking them. Yeah, that's true. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Hey, Eric, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, guys, how's it going? Yeah. I've got 20 tickets for Virginia Beach Amphitheater for Poison. That's Saturday night. Yeah, I don't yeah, know if they want to go to Virginia Beach, so. Hey, it's a beautiful town. Anyways, you got to have a little pool around town, Earl, to get tickets. Nice. That's true, Earl. This, if anything, it shows you lack of stroke. That's lack it. of stroke. I dealt directly with the publicist and the record company. Well, where's your stroke? Let me ask you something. Let's say Mickey Rourke calls. Can he get two tickets? Yes, he would definitely get two tickets. Thank you. Because he's the Pope of Greenwich Village. That's right. I'm the mook of Greenwich As Village. As well as the bar fly. <laughs> that was my point. You don't have stroke. Mickey Rourke now? Yes, Mickey Rourke now. Oh, I don't think so. Perhaps you saw a little film called Sin City. He played the part of Marv, and he played it well. And Sin City 2 was coming up, my friend. And if Marv, well, Marv wants, Marv gets. Why don't you try... Um, let me go to... Do me a favor, Johnny. Get a hold of Mikey D for me. Uh, Chris, you're on my Fez. Hey, you bodies. Yeah, buddy. Hey, as per usual, Mikey D never, ever gets you guys one ounce of slack. Hmm. I'll attest to that. Paul, you're on my Fez. Hey, guys, listen, if, uh... Earl wasn't so busy uh, doing this ticket search, maybe he'd actually book some guests for a change. You know, that's a good point, Earl. I haven't seen you pull off shit lately. Yes, and... Well, one reason is because of this. I'm, again, banging on the phones, uh, going on, going online, sending emails. Uh, this has completely ground me to a halt. And it's, it, Hello, Mikey? And again, it's always kind of... Uh, Earl, all that matters in this world is results. If my fucking stock fucking takes a shitter, I don't want to hear from my broker how fucking hard he works, how he's been looking at charts. That doesn't mean shit to me. Results. Yes, and I'm working very hard to get those, achieve those results. I really am. Why don't you call Wiki? Try to get some XM stroke on your side. Well, Wiki wanted to go to the show tonight too. I'm glad I didn't. I didn't make any verbal. So you're saying he's got nothing? You saying XM has zero stroke? Well, I'm not saying that at all. But I mean, send Wiki and Lene. <laughs> Fuck the D's. Uh, uh... All right, you know something? Uh, I don't even remember this being your concern. It is my concern. If you, that, that man's wounded me, and I can see he's hurt, wounded Earl. It's hurting the show. He's on the phone with the poison publicist for 24 hours. That's why he can't get guests. It's not. It's easy math to figure Fez, out. Have you ever seen a situation where these two idiots are on the same side? I, Normally, if anything, he tries to stab Earl in the back. Yeah, usually it's some gossip about Earl that we're getting. The only gossip I, I have is that he's working his ass off, and I'm, I'm behind him. That's Every step of the way. <laughs> Seriously, that's not gossip. It's not interesting. By the way, why didn't you come out for Chinese food yesterday with me and Earl? Thanks a lot for inviting <laughs> me, Earl. <laughs> Fuck our, our, our union. The, and then we went and had um, nice shakes. We went and had shakes later sitting in front of I a couldn't. Place. My girl got into a car accident yesterday. Really? Yeah. What happened? Car is totaled, so. Really? Very upsetting. But that's for another Drunky, uh, don't know how to drive, huh? <laughs> She's sober. <laughs> She's never sober. <laughs> Was there a chef driving and she was service? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Point is, Mikey, just for once, stop with the squealing. Stop with the everything. The emails, the behind-the-back shit. Leave us alone. Leave me and her alone. How about something without a tantrum once in a while? What are you doing on their side? What has happened here? When did the up become down and black became white? What the hell has happened to this show? I got so pissed at that call yesterday. Of trying to put me in the guilt seat to She's go to this thing. She's a little girl. She should know better. Support her. I could tell by listening back to that that I, I was being a tired, lazy bum. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard worse radio. I'm just like this. Yeah, what else you want, honey? <laughs> Horrible.
Yeah, I can only, you know, that's the way Earl got talked to yesterday when everyone in the Mikey D family thought they were going to poison. I, I can't imagine if he came through the rudeness that would happen. Right. All right, I got Mikey on the phone here. Let me do the talking, you three bastards. Please, for five <laughs> minutes. Okay. Just go and fucking the three of you, go stir a big pot of stew because you're like witches. <laughs> I wish we I had stew. I can't be around it. I'm pissed. Right. Why? There's no reason for any of you people to be... A, this is really between Earl, the D's, and me. It has nothing to do with Fez or Dave. You're going back to your problems. Dave's going back to his problems. It has nothing to do with what we're talking about now. Earl's just sitting there rubbing his temples. Like something bad's going to happen to him physically. It's Temple of the Dumb. All right, let me go to Mikey D and try to straighten this thing out. Mikey. Yeah. Sorry about all this. You know, I was cool with Earl last night because uh. I just wanted to hold my temper. Um, but then when I told, you know, my chick and I told Lene, they both got upset because it's like, okay, now if there's two tickets, I got to drive. And I already said to them, you guys go, I'll wait in the fucking parking lot. But Lene doesn't know, um, Helen doesn't know how to drive. She doesn't have a driver's license. She doesn't? No. So I'll drive them, and they could take the fucking tickets. But you know what, man? Everybody was bitching to me, and Earl was bitching to me three months ago in late April, early May, when I said, hey, can you get the poison tickets? And he says, sure, but we've got three months. And then I would, add, you know, once in a while I would, you know, say something to him like, don't forget the poison tickets. I got to agree. And that's why, if you said fucking no to the begin with, my source was on tour uh, when, when the tickets went on sale. And so that's why I asked Earl. And Earl said no problem. Earl sends me in, um, you know, my chick was calling a couple of weeks ago, asking Earl what's going on, just to be on the safe side when we got back from L.A. And then Earl sent me an email last Tuesday saying four tickets are there, Go to the will call window. All right, Mikey. Yeah. All that was true at the time. It's not like Earl did this on purpose. The record company did this, not Earl. I've never heard of anything of the fucking sort. Earl didn't lie to you for the past four months and decide to drop the bomb on you last night. I don't know where this comes from. All right, you just threw something. I'll get it. Uh, I... I've never heard of something where um, they say, okay, but again, we, you got four tickets now. But Mikey? By the way, you only have two. But Mikey, again, I read this. I'm going to read this email that I got last night. It's 643 from, from their PR group. And I read this to you verbatim last night. You didn't read anything to me, Earl. Yeah, I read this to you verbatim. You didn't read anything to me. You just said that the two tickets, maybe. Backstage, maybe. And I said, you know what? I'll pay for a third ticket if that's the case. Try to get that third ticket because, you know, that was what we wanted to do, the three of us. Well, Mikey, I understand that completely, and I'm on your side with that. But it's not like Earl made this shit up. This is the record company being asked. Yes, I'll read two emails that I got. God, was, read it fast. This was dated May 4th. No problem. I got you down for four tickets at, at Jones Beach. I'll stay in touch. It's a long way off, and we'll sort it out as we get closer. The email I get yesterday. Management has received so many requests that they are cutting down the guest list. This is all coming about today. I apologize for being last minute. I have to cut you down from four tickets to two. We could possibly do a ticket buy for the other two tickets if need be, but there is nothing I can do. I have to cut down the request. Those other two tickets, I'll pay for, get it done, Earl, and take care of it. And no, that's Roddy, it. you don't have to yeah, pay for it. I don't know. No. I'm on a fucking uh, Bill XM. Don't worry about it. No, and I, and again, and I'll say it now. I'll offer to pay for the tickets. I Nobody mean, I, to pay. I'll pay for my own fucking tickets. I'll get my own tickets then. That's that's it. You know. See, I don't understand why why Earl Earl's really upset that this happened. Right. He wanted to get you the damn four tickets, Mikey. He's still trying to get you a third. He's still trying to make phone calls, but why should he even bother if this is the attitude he's faced with? I would quit trying immediately if this is what I was faced with. Why should he even keep trying before the show tonight? Because whenever Earl has asked me to do something, I was there. And I only I, this is the only time I've ever asked for anything. I've never asked for any other fucking tickets, ever, ever. But you understand that this isn't Earl's fault. 
that Earl didn't do this. I understand that, but I don't understand the concept of somebody saying, you've got four tickets, now all not so fast, it's only two now. I agree with you, but Earl didn't do that. That's the fucking record company. He's got the stuff that the record company said. Well, you know, if he had any juice, he could get it, you know? Why the emails to run? Why always the emails to run? Please, so I can get to the bottom of it. I have no problem with that. Because I was so pissed off after the call and after I have to say that, you know, and talk to the family that I took a fucking walk. And that's Helen sending an email, not me. She's her own person. So is Lene. And I wasn't even home yesterday when Lene called. There was nothing rehearsed again. You know, she has, she wanted she to She knows the you. term back and front. Yes, she, she loves poison. Back. She, she does not. Poison. She played poison on a show last week when she did a show. Poison and Cinderella. She watches. She watches Cinderella's CD uh, DVD that I've had since last October because she, that reminds her of my old band. She knows these guys. She's singing the songs word for word. I so doubt this. Why would you doubt? Say now we're back in the same you know, thing. Why would you when, doubt when the story? Poison was on Jay Leno. A few, uh, like a month ago, she stayed up to watch it. So, well, I mean, this, it, this is not like she, I put her up to this, Fezzy. Come on, Fez. When, I don't it's the exact same again. thing with her first communion. Oh, I'm okay if Fez doesn't want to go. There was no guilt. Fezzy, really that's last year. That has nothing to do with this problem. And she didn't want to... Uh, this was not a call. F from what I understood, somebody called early in the show about... Seen poison yesterday. Then you guys were talking about back to school. Lene hasn't spoken to you guys in a while. She wanted to say thank you. That's really what she wanted to do. And then she wanted to be a wise ass with Earl about front and back. She knows what front and back is. She's come to my shows. She knows what what, what it's. She's been to other, <laughs> you have backstage been passes. To it's all case. front, no back. We've been to Keene together at Radio City. We're going to Keene again at Carnegie Hall. I can understand that. That's a band a little girl would like. She loves Poison. Not something 20 years before she was born. Well, that's because I, you know, I influenced her listening to these bands. You influenced her with that call yesterday. I did I... not, Fezzy. And that's that, you know, that's, that, that's, that doesn't, that, that, that shouldn't come into play. I wasn't even fucking home. All right, none of that matters. What you guys have gotten off into, none of it matters. Okay. You know, I, and the thing is, I said to them last night, you know what? I'll drive you guys there, and nice. I'll stay in the parking lot. All right, don't worry about all that. Again, here's the martyr. Here's the martyr, because Earl couldn't do him his favor. What, what can I do then? Earl, forget it. Earl? I check to stay home or tell, tell them, hey, listen, you know what? Me and Mom are going to go. Oh, I bet she'd say, fine, thank you. I can no, stay home wouldn't. and watch D DVDs. I can watch High School Musical on Disney Channel. Can I ever get my puppet back? She, she Just has, answer. She has, uh... Can I ever get my I, puppet back? She, you, I told you you can get it back. I, uh, I, everyone stop. Earl, call this fucking place. Say, give me the two tickets. If we got to pay for the third one, we'll pay for the third one. You don't have to pay. Now, XM will take care of it. Yes. Because this... Is something I feel like we've given to a listener, and if the record company's fucking us over, then XM should know about that. Yes. And then that's the end of it, and it's all taken care of. Yes, I will. When we go into break, I'm going to make this phone call. I mean, because again, I've I have done as much as I can. I'm continuing to do as much as I can. I don't know why you bother. And no, because I I feel like <sighs> I, no, I, I no, this is the way I feel. The thing is. It seems that you may not have done it. That's the way my perception was. Is like you waited and you waited and you waited too long. That was my perception. Well, that's okay? just not true. Okay. That's not true. So that, that is, is totally true. not true. But in our past, when you've asked me to do things, I've come through for you, and that was fine. And then even with Caravis, it was like pulling tooth and nail to get expenses for the band. That right, that's a, a whole different situation. Well, I know. It's, it's I mean, it, you, uh, there's I'm too much to past. Uh, but I hear this. I hear four people bringing up stuff from the past when really it's where you going, Earl. Isn't it amazing? Earl's fucking leaving. He's so mad. No, and I don't blame I'm him. I'm pissed, too. <laughs> yeah, the common link is Mikey D. Wow. What a, what, what a mystery we have here. Mikey, stop fucking around. Leave us alone. So good. I'll leave you fucking guys alone. Leave me alone. I'll leave 
have it. You alone. have nothing to do with this, Dave. Just leave me alone, Dave. Don't Dave. talk to me at the at the bar. Don't fake apologize. Don't say I'm so sorry and then on the air do nothing. Fucking Earl, my buddy's brain is fucked up over there. Brain. He, he couldn't do anything this morning, Ronnie. Because I am, I'm, tr well, I'm trying to do, do, do prep for the show. He's slamming stuff, and he's in tears. Why don't you ask? I told Earl, you know what? Don't waste your time before the show for the fucking tickets. But I said, if you could let me know before the show started, so then if you don't get it, I'll get, I'll do my best to get it, and I'll scramble. So I mean, you know what? I'll leave you guys alone. I'll get my own tickets, and I'll take care of it myself. That's all. Puppet. Whatever it is. You'll get your fucking puppet. You'll get your fucking puppet. I told you. I told you at the Blue Room. All right. You know? I said I'd fucking go and give it to you personally. Mikey, calm down. Let Earl make his call after. We're going to take care of this. You know, if Earl would have gotten a hold of me this morning and said I'm still having problems, I could have gotten online and gotten good fucking seats. Earl, why won't you stay in touch with anyone? I've done nothing but stay in touch with everyone. I mean, as far as this goes, I have even, like, well, again, this was four months before the show. I, I'll, again, I'm reading the first email from May the 4th. It said, we'll keep in touch. I, every month, at, subsequent month after that, at least once a month, I double check this. As early, as late as Friday, they said everything was cool. I called back on Monday to get a written confirmation. I called and emailed on Monday, getting getting a written confirmation. Six forty-five. I, I shouldn't even been in the office. I get this email. I mean, and how is that not keeping keeping on the ball? Oh, you've been fooling them all along, Earl. Six six forty five Eastern time. I get this email. I mean, it was and again. It wasn't like I planned on dropping the ball. I don't want to drop the ball. When somebody asks me for something and I say I can do it, I try to honor that request. And if I can't do it, I'll I'll be very upfront. I can't do it. Uh, Bill, you're on Ron and Fez. You know, just one word there, Mikey. To you, cheap fuck. Ticketmaster, stop calling in and try to get free shit. Just open your ass. I've never had to fucking fuck it. you, man. I've never fucking oh, asked fuck for me, anything. Fuck you. Just I go to Ticketmaster. I'm going to Ticketmaster. If There's I thought that... There's fucking available in the orchestra right now, you piece of shit. It's on fucking... It's, it's Orchestra G in the last row. Hey, Mikey. Jeez. Mikey, you listening? Yeah, I'm listening. Mikey. I don't fall for that, Mikey. Orchestra G? That's all that's left? Yeah, or, or, I don't understand why they don't act like they have tickets if if all they can sell out is the first fucking eight rows or whatever it is. Let me tell you something. There's still tickets available in the fifth row that I could fucking get, but I just got to pay premium prices. What's premium price? It's 150 bucks per ticket. No way. Yeah. Bullshit. Fuck you, dude. Bullshit on fucking rubber bricks. $150 for poison my ass. I will send the fucking link Fine. To We're good. We have to look this up. You motherfucker. Look it up. Look it up. Gee, I wonder why people don't like to do things for him. Uh, Cindy, you're on Ron and Fez. This is such fucking bullshit what Mikey D is pulling. Oh, and fuck this is you. Cause... You know... Oh, fuck you. Listen, if it was Paul McCartney, I could understand maybe why you're upset. They're an 80s band. Get over it. And if you... This That's causes your fucking preference. Fezzy... That's your fucking if preference. If this causes Fezzy to have another heart attack, I'm holding you personally responsible. Fezzy shouldn't have a heart attack because of this. Why does look good, Mikey? Fezzy is upset, Mikey. Earl is fucking ready to have a black man stroke. And Dave's ready to start drinking again. They're all furious. Then Fucking say to me the fucking time that I asked. I'm not sure if I can get it. That's it. Earl, I, I mean, Dave, uh, uh, Mikey, Earl has the thing from the record company that says you have four tickets. Well, That's well, all we have in this business. That's the trust between ball, radio. You fucking write back and you say no fucking way. You got to give me the four fucking tickets. That's what it Jesus is. Jesus Christ. Are you the president of the United States? What fucking demands are these? I I, he I couldn't do it. it! That's what I don't understand, the entitlement. I don't know where it comes from. I understand being disappointed that a promise was broken. I totally get that. I understand Earl being pissed at the uh, at the band. I to But I don't understand this. I, I deserve this. I want this. I should have this. I, I don't get that when it was originally all a favor. 
God, it's beyond my comprehension. If I walked around like this, just expecting people to get me stuff and that it be done, it well, would be insane. When somebody expects something from me, I give it. That's it. No matter what I have to do, it comes through. That's what I do. So that's maybe maybe that's bad thinking on my part. But when somebody says they're going to do something and they promise it, and it's been going on for months, I understand. How about some gratitude for the work he put into it so far for four months and and getting a pair of tickets if that was the best he could do? Ask him what I said to him at the Blue Room. I said thank you very much. I sent him an email. When you thought you were getting four. Hey, this is interesting, Mikey. I just got handsome uh, by the flash that said Orchestra B, buy Ticketmaster. $49. Orchestra B. B, second row. Um, why don't you give me the email so I can send you where it is? 49 bucks, Mikey, for Orchestra B. That's 100 less than you said, Mikey, per well, ticket. That's Ticketmaster. I'm saying... You just said Ticketmaster was 150 bucks. I didn't say Ticketmaster was 150 bucks. You got it! Said... It's on the air! You know what, man? I will send you the link. It's not Ticketmaster. It's one of those tickets. Well, look, I'm fucking crazy, Bill. We gotta, gotta take the extra. Ali, I'm gonna eat paper. Fine. If if this is one extra ticket for forty, we'll fucking pay the forty, Earl. Let's not make a big deal out of it. If we can't get them together, the little girl sits on her dad's lap, or he's up on her, or she's up on his shoulders, and it's all you Born know. out of her skull. Uh, it is gonna be dull. She's already made an outfit for tonight. So she, you know, I don't know where you're coming off as saying that she's going to be bored because she's, she's the one that wants to go. I cannot fucking, you know, it's not a big deal. It really isn't. We're going to get this fixed. Dave, I don't know why you're screaming and throwing things. Fezzi, you're looking like you're going to have another heart attack. And Earl, you haven't sat down in 15 minutes. Go to Live Nation, Nikon Live Nation. What? Where, go wherever uh, Flash goes for $40. Mike, you said Ticketmaster was 150. He gave me Ticketmaster. I said tickets were premium, and that's the fucking uh, like StubHub, not fucking Ticketmaster. Ticketmaster, I checked the last time I checked it was row. Check it again, dummy. Check it. I'm checking it now. Puppet. And you with your fucking puppet? I'll I'll fucking Thief. rip his head off now. Thief. I'll rip Go ahead. I'm sure I'm not gonna off. fucking see it again anyway. I don't care. Uh, I believe the puppet was a gift from Dr. Steve. You owe Dr. Steve 75 bucks. It's 55. All right, just stop, both of you. That should have been fucking cigars. It'll be worth it. Earl? To burn the fucking thing, and I'll pay the $55. Earl, take care of this, all right, buddy? Yes. I'm. I, I, and I've said this from the beginning. I, calls will be made. I'm going to do everything humanly possible to rectify the situation. Earl, then you're leading, the... Leading up to, if need be, I'll buy three tickets. For, so they can at least sit together and enjoy the show. And I would say this, too, before you even blame the band or anything. Record company guys are the biggest scumbags in the world. Well, they're right up there with promoters and DJs. Those are the three biggest scumbags in the world. What about publicists? Uh, fourth biggest scumbag. So all we ever do is deal with scumbags. We're very used to this kind of stuff. It's not, you know, unprecedented. Again, we're, we're going to... I'm going to do everything possible. I'm still in the, of the mindset. I'm going to try to make this possible. Earl, you're the work. nicest person in the world for still trying what? to help out. You, he's been accused of lying for four months. Like well, this was all some big setup. Yeah, that is true. To get Mikey D. Earl. The guy went and got the four tickets. They got yanked back. He didn't sit here and burn them. Cancel their other two tickets, Earl. Cancel. No, stop. Yeah, you know what? Cancel them. And, I, and Ronnie, I just sent you the link where you, the, you know they, they're saying that I'm lying that it's not 150 bucks. I, uh, XM's not going to pay your premium prices when we can get them a hundred dollars less the ticket. <laughs> I never asked for that. I'm just saying that's what they were. We have the Ticketmaster website that says forty nine dollars. You don't want to go pay above what fucking Ticketmaster uh, pays. What are you doing? And and we just looked it up. Orchestra B is right there on the stage. It's incredible fucking seats. <laughs> Well, not incredible when you see what you're looking at. A fucking poison show. They're good seats. Um, All right, Mikey D. Whatever. Talk to you later. Yep. Puppet. I'll get my own tickets, Earl. Forget it. Puppet. Earl, if he wants to get his own tickets, he can get his own tickets. Then you take a lovely lady and you go sit in Orchestra Bay or wherever the hell you are. And wave to the D's. Yeah. 
all I know is, I, uh, am I wrong here? <laughs> where did I where did I go wrong? Do me this favor. You call back the record company and say, I don't. Uh, whatever Ron and Fez get the chance to badmouth you to somebody, they will. Whether it's on the air, off the air, whatever they fucking can say. Oh, I know a record that shouldn't be played. One by this fucking band. We'll do it. And it'll be 88 all over again. We'll go back to those fucking days. Well, like the old, uh, I remember Muni used to take the whole label, the label's uh, records and put them in a crate and ship them COD. Yeah. <sighs> but, I mean, how, I mean, I don't know how I'm the bad guy. How it's just like all of that venom. You're not. All that venom was pointed at me. When all I've done is try to rectify the situation. I know. It's a, you found yourself in a horrible situation. I know you don't enjoy calling up someone at night and saying, "Guess what? Those tickets I promised you for tomorrow's show don't exist." The first one. I know you don't enjoy that. Dude, the first words I said, "Hey, Mike." He was like, "Hey, how you doing?" I'm like, "I'm not happy right now." I mean, I'm very upset right now, I was, and I was. I'm like, cause it was, it's an awkward position to be in, to say all of this. You're wearing the white hat on this one. What does that mean, white? Why bring it back to white and He's black? the hero. Heroes don't wear black? Not if they have good taste. I don't think so. <sighs> hey, Scott, you're on Fez. Hey, uh, Earl, do you know how to say go fuck yourself? I think that stopped you from having a, uh, you know, a heart attack right there on the air. There's no reason why you should have to give this guy a free ticket. Earl's not that kind of person. He's never going to tell Mikey D to go fuck himself. Earl's going to keep trying yeah. to come up with what he promised. Well, the thing is, is no one wants anyone to go fuck themselves. We want to get back to where we were, square one. And it doesn't help. I'm not going to lecture you guys. But it doesn't help when you guys bring up stuff from the past. And you don't focus on the one problem. When I said I was going to start being friends with Mikey D again yeah. after my heart attack, uh, we had all these assurances. Oh, I'm a changed guy. I think about others now. I don't think about my own needs. I'm not that selfish guy anymore. That guy totally reared his ugly head in the past 24 hours. I just want him out of my life. I want him and, He's his, not pu in your life. and his puppet stealing daughter out. Out. Don't call me anymore, please, Mikey. You're not even involved in this. You're not involved. Don't in call this. Earl either. I'm going to speak for him from now on. With, with regarding this situation, I will. All right. I need to move on. I'm going crazy. Every day it's some crazy thing. Every day it's some fucking crazy thing. I don't know how I'm supposed to deal with it. It's ridiculous that uh, they got this upset with Earl. I mean, I understand the disappointment. I'm so on on track with that. But to just get pissed at the guy who's still trying to help you get these tickets is beyond me. Mm. Low class. It really is. It's rude. I'm, I go back to the Miss Manners email. It's appalling. All right. Why don't we do this? Why don't we take a break? Now, the Big Poison show was last night. And a little bit of controversy yesterday because uh, Earl had problems. But by the end of the show, you got everything... Uh, straightened out, you got Mikey D and his family tickets, and you got him back to meet the band. I just got a one-line email last night that said, thanks uh, for the tickets. Helen didn't go. She felt sick. Wow. Oh, okay. So his oh. chick did not go. She didn't feel well. So I guess it was just Mikey and uh, Lene. Did Did you hear if they went backstage or anything, Earl? No, I haven't heard. I got that same email. Yeah. And I was my initial reaction. No, I said, no, what? Just let it go. Yeah. <laughs> just let it go. Here's one more dab of guilt from Mikey D that I can try to spread on this thing. What's the dab of guilt? Oh, Helen didn't go. She was sick. And I, it sounds like. What do you like... think? The, the, the show made her sick. Is that your point? I think no. His point is that everything he went through yesterday with Earl. Uh, just just had her is so upset. That's what that I meant. She, she when could, I said the show, I meant us. Oh, you yeah. Think, so you think the point of that was what happened on the show yesterday made his wife sick. Yes, upset her so much that she couldn't possibly travel to Jones Beach. No, see, I think you read more into that. No, I that really is 100% right. I know. He is the king of Let me guess, fucking Earl's going to jump in. The three of you again, um, the beatdown begins. I'm, I am not saying a word. I'm letting it go. Now, I got a... Uh, email from Greg from Buffalo who said that Mikey D now 
is Iron Mikey D. Sharp because it's been so long since he's had a win on the show. <laughs> and when I thought about it, I can't. I mean, it was pre Wonder Boy since he's had a win on the show. Oh yeah, just uh, a few years ago we did the Saint uh, Pat Spat a boxing match. That Ronnie's talking about where he got his ass handed to him in a boxing match against our producer, Wonder Boy. Yeah, so it's been a long, long time since uh, he's pulled out a victory for himself. But at least, Earl, the show went good. You got him in there. I guess he met the band with the, with the baby, and they all have fun, and we're all pals again, and we're all back to square one. I don't think we're back to square one. Screw him. I'm back to square one. Earl, you? I honored my commitment. That's all I'm going to say. See, that's as close as he's coming to square one. I don't think he's in square one. Okay. I'm not going as close as Earl is. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm square pissed. I'm think... multiplied. I'm multiplied by five. Well, I'm you not know going what? You square were one. looking for this. You were looking for a reason because you were bringing up stuff from the past. Right. Well, I still would like my Papa Jivey back, but I'm still, I'm also defending Earl and just saying, look, Mikey's wrong. He's always That's wrong. the only good thing that came out of this is that you and Earl were on the same side. We're on the too. You were all like a team together. And this team is not dissipating. Yeah. Me and Earl are going to be on team. Here's what all. you guys need to do. Sing Broadway about it. Why don't the three of you get together, start to sing uh, Broadway stuff?